the Israelites all left Egypt. All the Israelites left Egypt. They all had great encounters with the Lord. But only two entered the promised land, Joshua and Caleb. The people that followed them to the promised land were the offspring, you know, while they were on the way, they gave birth to children. Are you there? So the generation that left, when, we, you see, when you see the Bible saying, or when you see preachers saying two people entered into the promised land, it's not saying two with respect to numbers as it is. There were actually thousands, millions of them that entered into Canaan land. But this is what that two means. You see, the generation of people that came from, that left Egypt, are you there? From that generation, only two entered into Canaan, and that's Joshua and Caleb. But those generations that died on the way, they also gave birth to children. So Joshua and Caleb now led their offspring, but the parents, the fathers, the mothers, those people that left Egypt, they died on the way. Only two of them entered into the promised land because of their unbelief. Those people died because of unbelief. But God, by his mercy, saved their children. So Joshua and Caleb now led their children to the promised land. The parents could not see, but the children entered. And these children were already matured. They were, they, they were already matured. So it was not like they were, you know, leading children as it is, not infants now, no. They were already matured, but their parents were not privileged to enter into the promised land because of their unbelief. I hope you understand now. So let me come again. The Israelites all left Egypt. They all had great, great encounters with the Lord, but only two entered the promised land. Though their seed entered, but for the older generation, it was only Joshua and Caleb that entered. Everyone in Moses' ministry had all it takes to be a minister. Everyone in the ministry of Moses had what it, what it takes to gather crowd because they had terrible encounters, I mean serious encounters. But yet, yet, you know, yet the love of God was not in their heart. They saw miracles, several signs and wonders, yet the love of God was not in their heart. Let's take a look at some of the encounters they had. These same people, they saw God parting the Red Sea. It has never happened before. That was not strong enough to change their heart, their hardened heart. They saw manna coming from heaven and the head of it. Oh, that was not strong enough to change their heart. They saw God speaking to them audibly from a mountain. That was not strong enough to change their heart. Can you see how adding their heart is? They saw water coming out from the rock. That was not strong enough to change their heart. They saw quails gathering, you know, gathering for, for them. You know, quails, when I say quails now, there's a bed called quails. When they requested for meat, the Lord sent quails to them. They ate flesh. They don't even know where the birds came from. They just saw that all the quails gathered and they were eating. That was not enough. They saw miraculous healings from the snake bites. I hope you can still remember that story. There was a time snake just came and then, because they murmured against God and then they were attacked by snakes and then Moses gave an instruction as directed, as directed by God, and they were healed from that venom. That was not enough. That was, enough. that was not enough miracles for them. They saw their clothes divinely adjusted to their size because it was the same clothes they, they wore while coming out that they used all through that years. Yet it was not dirty. Every day the angels were washing the clothes on their body. That was not enough. Their sandals were not destroyed all through the years. That was not enough. Can you see? When your heart is ardent, there's nothing God will do that will make sense to you. None of them were sick. None of them were sick. But that was not enough for them. The pillar of cloud was leading them by day. That was not enough. The pillar of fire was leading them by night. That was not enough. Before them, the ground opened and swallowed certain rebellious individuals. Those who rebelled against Moses, they saw that too. But that was not enough to change their heart. There are many others. 
You see, if you meet one Israelite in those days, I can assure you, he or she can tell you something about the supernatural, physically. Because they had several experiences while in the ministry of Moses. But unfortunately, these encounters, this experience they have, could not bring them into the point where they love God. So that will bring us to this conclusion. You see, miracles are good, but it's not enough to change the heart of a person. Yes. There are people that will see miracles and yet their heart will not be changed. What they need is Jesus. Jesus is the greatest of all miracles. Until Jesus happens to them, ah, bodily healing will not matter to them. You can, so a, a person can stand from which year. Somebody can die now and you will raise the person by the power of God from the dead and the person will still go back a sinner and continue to live more, a, a life that is more worse in sin than before. Why? Because Jesus has not happened to that person. You see, it is until Jesus happens to people, that's when salvation becomes a reality. Not just miracles, as good as it is. The miracles can also help the process, but it's not enough. You cannot mentor people if all you know is the act of God. You know what God does. Do you know the ways of God? May the Lord help us. When God does miracle around you, he's doing that so that you can love him, so that you can develop love for him. If the doings of God in your life cannot translate into love for him, then there's a problem. 